Hello and welcome to this video where we'll be going over the snapshot feature within Dell EMC PowerStore. Here's the agenda for this video. We'll start by briefly going over the snapshot technology that is used in PowerStore. We'll then dive into a short demonstration on how to manage snapshots within the PowerStore Manager. We'll then end the video by showing a few additional resources you can leverage for more information on PowerStore. Snapshot is the main method for using local data protection in PowerStore. It's supported on multiple storage resources such as volumes, volume groups, virtual machines, file systems, and then clones. Snapshots are not full copies of the original data. The reason for this is because snapshots are pointer based and leverage redirect on write technology. A snapshot starts to consume more system capacity as changes such as rewrites are made to the source object. It's important to note that all snapshots are read-only. If an administrator would like to have access to a snapshot, there are a few things to be aware of. For block storage resources, such as volumes and volume groups, a thin clone must be created based on the parent resource for host access. As for file system snapshots, they can be accessed by using the following methods. If the snapshot is a protocol snapshot, it can be exported as a SMB or NFS share for host access. However, if it is a dot snapshot, an administrator can utilize previous versions in Windows or the hidden folder dot snapshot for Linux based hosts. Thin clones can also be created for file systems to enable read write access. There are two ways to create snapshots in PowerStore. An administrator can create them manually or automatically with a protection policy that has a snapshot rule. Protection policies are the data protection engine in PowerStore. They can be applied to many different types of storage objects such as volumes, volume groups, virtual machines, file systems, and thin clones. Protection policies can be made up of two different types of rules, either a snapshot rule or a replication rule. The snapshot rule is used to determine when a snapshot will be automatically taken. You can add up to four different snapshot rules to a protection policy. The second type of rule, which is a replication rule, is used to determine how often a storage resource will be replicated to a remote PowerStore system. However, note that there can only be one replication rule per protection policy. On this slide, we can see that there are many different types of operations that are available for snapshots. For example, an administrator can perform a create, modify, delete, restore, and refresh operation on different types of storage objects. Prior to performing a restore refresh operation, IO should be quiesce and host buffers should be cleared. When performing a restore operation, you're taking a storage resource such as a volume and returning it to a point in time copy of itself. For refresh operations, it largely depends on what type of storage resource you're using. For block operations, a refresh replaces the contents with the data from another storage resource in the same family. For example, we can take a volume and refresh it from a thin clone of the original volume. When performing a refresh on a file system snapshot, the contents of a snapshot will be replaced by the contents of the parent resource, which is the file system. Let's now take a quick look at a snapshot demonstration from the PowerStore Manager. This is the main dashboard of the PowerStore Manager. Let's start by taking a look at how many volumes we have on this system. Here you can see that there are many different volumes running on the system. We can see here that there are at least two volumes that have a protection policy running on the system. This means that these volumes could have scheduled snapshots or replication sessions running or perhaps both. Let's take a look at one of these volumes in detail. We're now on the property details of the engineering volume. To view snapshots or application details, we'll click on the protection policy tab. When we click on the protection tab, we can see that there are a few snapshots that were automatically generated by the protection policy. Let's click on the take snapshot button, which brings up a window pane where we can supply some additional information such as a name, description, and retention. For this demonstration, we'll name this manual snap. We now have our new snapshot and we can clearly see that it is a manual snap by taking a look at the snapshot type. 
for the one we just created, the type is shown as user versus the other snapshots, which is shown as scheduled. Next, we'll see how it's possible to create a protection policy with a scheduled snapshot. We'll start by going to the protection tab and click on protection policies. On this page, we can see a gold and silver policy already created. We can see that the gold policy has a snapshot rule and a replication rule already applied. If we hover over the snapshot rule, we see there is a rule that's running Monday through Friday with a frequency of taking the snapshot every hour and a retention of seven days. Let's take a look and see how to create a new protection policy from scratch and assign a new snapshot rule. For this demonstration, our new protection policy will be named Bronze Policy. If we wanted to use existing rules, we could easily check them off here to be assigned to the policy. However, we want to create a new rule. On the Create Snapshot Rule page, we'll give it a name and set the snapshot scheduler to run every day. We'll then set the rule to run with a frequency of every five minutes and leave the retention to default and have the snapshots expire every four hours. On the bottom of this rule, you'll see a section for file snapshot access type, which is important if we assign this protection policy to a file resource. Protocol snapshots are the default selection that will be applied to the snapshot rule. You can select this if you want to create a share base on the snapshot and mount it to a regular file system. For .snapshot, you select this if you want to enable self-service restores through previous versions in Windows or .snapshot directory in Linux. We now have the snapshot rule, so we'll go ahead and check it off and assign it to our protection policy. I also have the option to assign a replication rule. However, for this demonstration, we'll leave this unchecked and create our policy. We now have our protection policy, so now the last thing to do will be to assign this to a storage resource. For this demonstration, we'll go to the volumes page and assign this to a volume. On the volumes page, we can see that the finance volume doesn't have a policy. To assign one, we'll select our volume and click on More Actions and Assign Protection Policy. Here we can see our policy we just created and assigned it to our volume. If we take a look at the details of the finance volume under the Protection tab, we can see the protection policy is assigned. If desired, we can also change it from this page if needed. We also see that no snapshots have been taken yet. However, as time progresses, you can see now that there are scheduled snapshots that have appeared on the system. Now, remember that in order to give host access to these snapshots, we need to perform a thin clone operation. Let's select one of these snapshots and click More Actions, where we can create a thin clone based upon the snapshot. We'll give it a name and assign it to our Windows host on our system. Here we see that as we assign this volume to this Windows host, we can generate a logical unit number automatically or provide a specific one if we wanted to. We'll leave all values as default and go ahead and create the thin clone. Going back to the volumes page, we can see the thin clone that we just created. Let's now see how we can perform a restore and refresh operation on this finance volume. We can perform these operations either from the volumes page or the volumes properties page that we were previously on. For demonstration purposes, I'll show you the flow from the Volumes page. If we click on the More Actions dropdown, we'll click on the Restore option, which will put the parent resource to this snapshot's point in time. Before this restore operation is executed, it is recommended that you quiesce any I.O. running on your host. You can also see at the bottom of the screen that a backup snapshot will be taken before the restore operation is executed. Next, let's take a look at a refresh operation. When performing a refresh, a parent resource will be updated with the storage resource that we select. In this example, let's say we want to refresh the finance demo with our thin clone we just created. I start by selecting the finance demo volume and click more actions and then refresh. When performing a refresh operation, it is recommended to quiesce any IO running on your host. Here in this menu, on the left-hand side, we'll select our thin clone we just created to refresh our finance demo volume. Note that we'll also create a backup snapshot before the refresh operation is executed. That concludes this demonstration. Just to recap, we took a look at how to create a manual snapshot. We also explored how to create and manage protection policies with snapshot rules. We also created thin clones to create host access for our snapshots and we wrap things up by showing how to perform a restore and refresh operation.
For additional information regarding snapshots, please reference the resources listed on the screen on dell.com slash storage resources.